In this video, I'm going to show you how you can model more accurately in Unity using a free tool called ProGrids. Hey guys, Adam here from Pixel Mystique. I make games and I help others to learn game dev. If you're new to this channel, do consider subscribing to get game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever I upload new videos. If you're using Pro Builder in Unity, you might find it difficult to create objects according to specific size and measurements. But if you have Pro Grids installed, you can easily snap vertices, edges, or faces to a 3D grid. What's more is that you can also adjust the units or the size of the grid to suit your needs. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Pro Grids if you're looking to install Pro Builder, I made a separate video for that. Link is up here and in the description below. So I've got this empty scene open in Unity. And to install Pro Grids, head over to Window, Package Manager, and then make sure you go to All Packages and have that selected. And then you scroll down to find Pro Grids. If you don't see ProGrids anywhere in the list, click on Advanced and make sure Show Preview Packages is selected. And then from there, click Install. Once you have ProGrids installed, you can exit the Package Manager. And then if you don't see ProGrids already available, don't freak out, just head over to Tools, ProGrids, and click on ProGrids window. And immediately you'll see a grid that's additional to the Unity scene. And then you'll see on the top left of the scene, there's a new window for ProGrids. And when you click on it, there's a whole bunch of buttons that allows you to configure ProGrids. All right, we're gonna go through each of the ProGrids button one by one. And the first one you see with the number is a snap settings. So when you click on it, a new pop-up window will appear. And first of all, the snap value here is how big each square on the grid is. So if I zoom in and see from this color right here, which is a green color, it's the Y grid. And each of this small square is one meter by one meter in Unity, hence the number one here. You can use the minus and equals keyboard shortcut to increase or decrease the size of the grid, like so. I'm gonna leave this back to one. You can also, of course, change the value of the grid manually by selecting this and changing the number. Next, there's also snap on scale enabled. This will ensure that you can decide when scaling a 3D object, will it snap to the grid here? So for example, if I have Pro Builder open right now, and we'll create a new shape. And if I were to then scale this, The scale is based on snapping to the grid. Next on the snap settings is snap as a group. You enable this option so that you can keep relative positions of multiple selected objects when you move them. Personally, I don't find that much use for this, but I just leave it on. The angle value here, which is by default 45 degrees, is the angle value when you're viewing certain objects in orthographic mode. In Unity, when you select the cube icon here, you can change between perspective or orthographic mode. The icon here, you'll notice instead of an arrow, you'll have three lines, which means you're in orthographic mode. So if I select a new shape, and make sure you enable this, then you can see that there's a guide for the angle, which is right now set at 45 degrees. 
Then lastly, within the snap settings, there's predictive grid. You can enable this option if you want pro grids to automatically set the rendering grid plane according to object movement. So for example, if I enable this grid option, predictive grid option, and if I zoom out, it then tries to predict which grid I'm referring to if I'm moving an object on a certain axis. If I'm moving up and down, it's gonna switch to the Z grid. If I'm moving around like this, it's gonna switch to the Y grid. And if I'm viewing it from here, it's gonna switch to the X grid. Personally, I don't really use this, so I prefer to have it switched off. Question of the day. What is your preference when it comes to snap settings? Let me know in the comment section below. Hey, before we continue, I just wanna make a quick announcement. I just set up a Discord server for Pixel Mystique, link in the description below. It's a place where I share more tips and resources for game dev. I also share various tools that I use. There's also channels for the community to contribute and share not only their projects, but also tutorials they made or if they find any online. You can also ask for help from the community when you get stuck in game dev and you can even find people to collaborate with, whether it's paid or just for fun. So do check it out. Now let's get back to the video. All right, next on the list, we have this eye icon here, which basically just toggles the grid visibility on and off. You might want to switch it off when you're doing some other work. Beneath it is the snap toggle. This will then ensure whether or not you are snapping to the grid. And then next you have something called push to grid. This will snap the object to the nearest point of a grid. So you can view it from up here. I'm moving the object randomly without placing it anywhere in your grid. Like so. When I click push to grid, it'll snap to the closest point. Next we have follow grid. And if this is turned off, it will lock the perspective grid in place. If not, the grid will follow wherever the object goes. So for example, right now if I move this cube, the grid is following me. If I make sure that this is turned off, the grid stays in place and I can move the object freely. Especially if I turn the snapping on, I can reference the grid and it snaps to the grid without it having to follow the object every single time. Next, we have the three buttons down here, which is quite straightforward. It just shows you which grids you want to render or enable. So we have the X, Y, and Z planes, and they're all color-coded red, green, and blue. So if you want more manual control, you can easily toggle them on and off. And then lastly, we also have the ability to <clears throat> and lastly we have the ability to trigger all three grids at once by clicking on the 3d button maybe you will find use for this i personally use just one grid at a time you can customize pro grids further by going to edit preferences and selecting pro grids there's a bunch of settings you can play around here so for example, you can change the grid units from meter to centimeter or inch or foot. You can even customize some keyboard shortcuts and the grid colors. So there's a bunch of other things here that you might find useful. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. It is due to their generosity that I'm able to make more games and more videos like this one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing for more game dev tips, tutorials, and inspiration. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.